The academic cover letter acts as the first chance to introduce your scholarship and academic experience to your potential employer. It does the rhetorical work of an epideictic statement that self-evaluates your intellectual background with detail, accuracy, and measure, but it also offers a deliberative articulation that persuades your audience of your potential contributions to a faculty that you propose to join. While you will need to figure out how to best craft the content in context of your academic self-portrait, the cover letter has some structural conventions that you should follow because the selection committee will expect that you have familiarized yourself with this professional genre. As PhD candidates in English studies, your cover letter should also demonstrate your ability to compose a cogent letter in carefully crafted prose. After all, you've spent umpteen years analyzing the quality of textual productions, and this letter should prove your capabilities to do just that. While the academic cover letter challenges everyone who sits down to write it, the tricky genre does have specific structures and conventions, giving it some finite rhetorical boundaries. The academic letter has three necessary sections, not necessarily in this order. One, the dissertation abstract showing expertise in a particular area. Two, the teaching statement, describing your past pedagogical experience and perspective. And three, the service aspect of your PhD experience, what you contributed to your intellectual community. The letter should cover the content of these three areas of interest, but you should organize them depending upon the intended parameters of the position as described in the job description and indicated by the departmental culture as revealed in their website. Once you've brainstormed and mapped your experiences, strengths, and contributions, you should begin preparing your letter using the following conventions. One, your cover letter should appear on departmental letterhead. The English PhD program will provide you with this template. Two, the cover letter should follow conventional forms of the business letter. Three, the cover letter should be only two pages in length. For an entry level junior position, you must consolidate your statement into two pages. The search committee will read many, many letters, so the more concise yet convincing your letter, the more you will impress them and relieve them during their labor-intensive hiring process. Four, the cover letter should show and not tell. Yes, a cliche of the English studies classroom, but so true in this persuasive situation. Imagine the response of your audience to these two statements. A, I feel passionate about teaching and care about my students. Or B, before each semester, I construct a syllabus that will offer my students a step-by-step -step guide to their learning experience. My students tell me that they appreciate my clear instructions, but more rewardingly, their assignment submissions prove that with careful instruction that they can succeed. While the first example makes a generalized statement that could apply to anyone, the second describes a specific set of details about your teaching. Five, prepare a concise but thorough abstract of your dissertation project. You have spent inordinate hours preparing the dissertation, but this audience wants an incisive synopsis of your intellectual expertise. You must attentively articulate your dissertation project for the disciplinary expert in your English concentration, but it must also speak to the general reader who may not know the contextual background of your subfield. Indicate to this hiring committee that your dissertation explanation can speak to the specialist as well as to the reader who is less familiar with your subject matter. Six, as noted in number four, the teaching statement should provide discriminatively selected details about your classroom experience. You could also include your acquaintance with tutoring, teacher training, and or curriculum design. What evidence can you convey to show your pedagogical innovations, approaches, and practices? What excellent evaluations or observations have you had that testify to your teaching? The call for some positions will request a separate teaching statement, but like the dissertation abstract, you should also have a concisely stated summary of your teaching practices as well for the cover letter. Seven. In your cover letter, present yourself as a contributing colleague rather than as a graduate student. Through your scholarship and teaching, 
you have gained experience, so compose your experience with confidence. Use active constructions rather than passive to-be verbs. Compare the readerly impact of these two sentences. Students were busy with many activities that were designed to challenge their capabilities. With the careful guidance of my classroom exercises, students engage in active learning that fosters their rehearsal of my course objectives. While the first sentence conveys a grammatically correct and informative sentence, the second performs the action-based intentions of your teaching. 8. Instead of assuming that selection committee members will find your publication record in your CV, explicitly state which publications you have in press, at submission status, in manuscript stage, and or in a forthcoming publication. 9. Refer to upcoming research projects that you have started, proposed, or planned. Your research does not end with your dissertation project. Indicate that you have a research agenda beyond that dissertation project. 10. Your cover letter should relay that you have carefully done your homework about the institution to which you apply. So 1. You have paid attention to the details of the job description and 2. You have familiarized yourself with the culture of the institution, the department, and the faculty members in that department. Does your cover letter respond to the details of, their, of the position? What does the department website tell you about the current faculty members and what they value as a collective? Do you know the work of some of the individual faculty members? How does your scholarship and knowledge complement or extend what the department already offers? These given specified tips with all of their complicated intricacies offer you a framework of the academic cover letter genre yet they can't finesse the critical drafting that you must do to compose this complex type of document. Once you have drafted your academic cover letter, and each time you send it out, you must consider how it will address the needs of the faculty to whom you apply.